So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Adrián Granados. This is my third uh, year attending the conference. For those who don't know me, I'm, the, I'm a software developer. I'm the maker of Wi-Fi Explorer and AirTool and other <laughs> Mac apps. So my tank talk uh, today is going to be uh, kind of a, maybe a refresher for some. Uh, for others, it, uh, um, it's basically so this is this is a screen of a screenshot of AirTool, and then you see there is an option called Link Layer Header. So most of the time you don't really care about it. You have probably haven't noticed that when you do a packet capture. But uh, so to the, um, whoa. I wanted to um, today just talk about what that means. What is that uh, 802.11 plus radio tab header or the per, per packet information? What, what is that option? And it's an option that you also get in Wireshark and other protocol analyzers. Um, so this link layer header is uh, also called a pseudo header. It's, uh, it's some information that the driver puts in the frame when it gets captured. So it's not. It's not uh, information that gets transmitted with the packet. It's information that it's appended to the frame, and then that is passed to the user space application. So from the driver to the user space when you are uh, capturing, or from the user space application to the driver if you are injecting, which is something that you want to probably do if you are in least the deep dive. Um, so one, imp one important thing about this is that this uh, link layer header is only appended if you are, if the, ad if the adapter is in monitor mode. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that in a second. So there is a screenshot of Wireshark and then you can see that highlighted in blue, the radio tab header. Uh, some of the fields there, I'm going to go in uh, detail later. So monitor mode, what is monitor mode? It's this mode that allows the uh, driver to capture control frames, management frames, and data frames. Usually you only care about, you know, applications don't only care about data frames because that's what they are transmitting and receiving. But since we are, uh, we want to troubleshoot or we want to see everything, we need to put the adapter into monitor mode. Um, now, not all drivers support monitor mode, so only, uh, I mean, say I, I, it has to be supported, it's not a standard feature. Uh, the built-in adapter in all Macs support monitor mode. And one important thing also is that monitor mode is not the same as promiscuous mode. In promiscuous mode, you get all the frames for the network you are associated to. The difference with monitor mode is that in monitor mode you get all the frames regardless of what network they belong to. So it's all that's in the air. Of course, there are you know some limitations depending on how much traffic is going on. The adapter might not keep up with all the traffic. You might not get everything. But uh, in an ideal world, monitor mode means all the frames <coughs> that are you know in range can be decoded. Um, so there are many header formats. Radio tab is, I guess, the most common one. Uh, back in there, uh, you know, some years ago, uh, we had Prism uh, 802.11 plus AVS radio information. You don't see this um, um, these days, to be honest. Only if you are, you know, working with very old other drivers. Uh, then we have per packet information, the radio tab, which is one of the most common ones. And uh, there are some vendor proprietary, like the header format for the OmniPix software. That it's, uh, you know, they have their own uh, pseudo header for the frames when they are capturing. So, <clears throat> 
about these legacy headers. Uh, they were designed for a uh, very old, you know, 802.11b and G networks. They had a uh, fixed length and some only a, f uh, a few fields uh, like channel, the signal strand, noise. Uh, the prism, for example, didn't have the FCS code, um, which is you know what uh, was a limitation back then. Uh, the per packet information is one that is kind of having a header inside a header because it's kind of uh, there are. This is not only for Wi-Fi. You can you can use this format, or the driver can use this format to insert whatever they want. So, but there are some specific Wi-Fi headers: the 802.11 common, 802.11 n MAC extensions, 802.11 n MAC plus. Five extensions. Um, so when you see these headers, you see first uh, the PPI header, and then you get this other specialized header. For example, in this case, 11 common, and in each field is defined as a type length value. This is the same format you see for the information elements in a beacon, for example. So you get. One, uh, one or two bytes, one byte for the type, one five byte for the length of the field, and then the payload of the field. <clears throat> the radio tap header format. This is the one you probably are most familiar with. Um, and this is a very flexible format. It allows to specify an arbitrary number of fields. The fields are strictly ordered, and they are um, uh, they can you know there are many fields that have some in your capture, not all of them, and the way they are um, they are indicated to be present is by using this present flux, which is a 32 byte value where each bit indicates whether the field is present or not. So you see if there, for example, the, the rate is present, the rate at which the frame was transmitted, the channel, the signal, noise, most of them after that are absent. Uh, so in the example to the right, the error rate is 24 megabits per second, channel frequency is uh, the five gigahertz, 36 and some other information that you see there. One of the nice things about the radio tab header and uh, something that you will see with the introduction of 802.11 AX, because new fields are coming for that uh, mode, is that it can be extended. So you see there the last bit on the bottom is called ex this the extension bit. If it's set to one, it means that there is a, it, that, 32 byte, uh, 32 bit value is followed by a, another 32 field, and and then from now on you you start. So the first, so they are numbered. So the first field is number one, number two, number three, number four. When you get the extension, you add 32, so you get 33, 34, 35. So the next extension bit is the bit 63, and then you can have you can change more of these fields. Um, yeah, another thing to notice is that the length of each field is implicit, which means you have to go and look at the documentation, the definition, and say, okay, this is the field uh, signal. Okay, signal is supposed to be two bytes, and that's how you get the length. It's not as the, in the PPI format where you get like a DLV format. <clears throat> so some of the common radio tap fields that, um, are mostly present in all uh, the drivers that are supported are channel, which is the transmission, uh, the transmit frequency or the receive frequency. Um, again, if you are capturing, this is the frequency that the frame was transmitted on. If you are injecting the packet, is the frequency you want the packet to be transmitted on. Um, 
signal, strength, noise in dBm, some uh, flux properties of the frames if the flux is, if, if the, sorry, the frame is encrypted, uh, the EM, MS, MCS index, or uh, some, uh, there is a field, the VHT field for 802.11n networks that have information about, uh, it has information about the guard interval, beamforming, all those uh, features that came up with 802.11n. Now for 802.11ax, we will see, well, three fields have been suggested. They are still, you know, being tweaked as the, the standard is also being developed. So we have the HE for high efficiency, HEMU, HEMU other user. And it basically, the main one is the HE, HE field, which indicates uh, the f that the frame was received or transmitted using the 802.11ax5. Um, so at the bottom you see some of the fields. As I said, this, this is still being developed. So it might change, it's, it's a suggested field, it's not a defined field yet. <clears throat> so how you enable this, these pseudo headers in Wireshark? Remember you have to have monitor mode enabled and then you can choose the type of um, link layer header. Now, you see that in, in Wireshark, um, you see, for example, raw, raw IP 802.11 header. These are different because they are not pseudo headers because it's not something the driver is appended to the frame. He's just saying that, okay, from the frame, I just want the IP payload. Or from the frame, I just want the 802.11 payload. So if you are capturing from an encrypted Wi-Fi and you get raw IP, then you get nothing because it's encrypted and Wireshark doesn't have a way to know what is the, if it's an IP packet or not. <clears throat> um, in Airtool, it's just a simple option, but as I said, most of the time you don't have to change that, you just go and use it. I just wanted to you know, share details about what that means in the, um, when you are capturing. One thing I missed and I want to talk about is in, in Wireshark, there is this uh, 802.11 radio information section. Usually in Wireshark, when you scroll down over all the items, you see that that, you know, that row maps to, maps to some bytes in the frame. For that section, if you click on any of those uh, items, it doesn't map to anything on the frame. It's because Wireshark is trying to standardize the way the, the 802.11 information is being displayed. So for those are kind of common fields from the radio tab header. So if, uh, if we have a PPI header instead, the radio information section will have pretty much the same fields, except that it will extract that information from whatever fields it needs from the PPI header or from the radio tab header. So as I said, it's not, it's nothing that you've, it's not a header, it's, it's just Wireshark trying to standardize the way this information is played from different header types. And that will be, that will be all.